Call from Emily. Emily, dude, what's happening? Oh my gosh, hi. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? Uh, you know, I can't complain. Can't complain. Uh, Honestly, man, you made good. my day. I made your day. I mean, you've done anything, Emily. I, I know, but I've been trying to call you before, and I work at a fast food store, and honestly, as soon as like I saw your, have you ever been in a fight? I was like, well, does today count? Of course today counts. <laughs> what happened today? Um, It was mostly like work-related stuff, and what, what happened is like I work for um, Dunkin' Donuts, right? And there was some issues where we were short money and other of the workers were like fighting back and forth. It was a whole issue. Um, it, it's just been awful. So honestly, being able to talk to you just makes my whole day. <laughs> short money from the cash register? Yeah. Like, honestly, for a whole day, we were short like 28 bucks. What the hell kind of fight could have could have gone down over 28 bucks? Was it like... The fact they that they were like each next time. Is there a thing where like if you're short at the end of the day, all of you get like fined or punished or something? Yeah, like he said that this was the time they'll cover it, but next time they're like, Oh, we're gonna pull it out of your paychecks. Damn. Yeah, what, it was what, kind what of was scary. The, well, the fight was between the employees. What were they arguing over? Were they accusing each other of having taken it? Yeah, they started saying, like, oh, it's because your issue is you guys don't count the tills when everybody just starts. Because, like, I work in a group with mostly girls, so it just became one big cat fight. <laughs> mm. And were you involved? Was it Did this uh, fight get physical? Were there cappuccinos thrown at each other? <laughs> Funny enough, no, there wasn't. There was actually customer complaints about cappuccinos, though. But um, mm. I didn't work the day that the till was short, so everybody was, like, trying to keep my name out of it. It was hmm. it was interesting. Yeah, now that I think about it, uh, Dunkin' Donuts is a a interesting place for a war zone. Um, <laughs> yeah. People pelting. You, we've been throwing like hash browns other. at each other. Yeah. 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 I you mean, all of I a sudden, mean, you, you just see a croissant a, like fly across the room. You would think that, like, I mean, a doughy sort of munchkin probably wouldn't hurt that much, but you get one of those thick, like. Like the uh, the chocolate cake ones. I mean, that could leave. Oh uh, yeah, and you wait till like the end of the day when they're hard, and then that's when you chuck them. Mm -hmm. Hey, is it is it true that if you go to Dunkin' Donuts like right when you clo when they close and you ask them for free food, they'll give it to you? No, unfortunately, we do have people that do that. But like my boss says that we can give them like a buy one get one deal. So like they buy like half a dozen, we can give them a dozen. Mm. Yeah, I wish we could give food out. Honestly, we kind of get in trouble for that sometimes because I call him my favorite homeless guy. He stops by the store every time, always orders ice, a bunch of liquid sugar, and coffee. And I'm honestly afraid they're going to catch me one of these times giving it to him. You can get in trouble for just giving him ice? Yeah, uh, fun fact, we charge for water and pup cups. That's crazy, man. Well, it is. I'm probably going to get in trouble. I'm like, I'm fine with that. But well, look, good on you for sticking it to the man. <laughs> Have you ever been in a fight, though? Like real talk. <laughs> oh, Emily, 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 Emily. Listen, thank you so much for sharing your story. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I wish you the best of luck out there. I hope that you don't have to resort to um, weaponizing French crawlers. But if you do, um, <laughs> I hope, I hope you have fun. Thank you. Well, so thank much you, for and you in, too. You have well, have a good luck on your journey the rest of the night. <laughs> bye bye. Call from Gigi. Gigi? Oh, oh, hello. Hello, Gigi. Hey, Gek, how you doing? I'm doing good, dude. What, what are you up to? Um, I'm chilling at my parents' house right now. Chilling at your parents' how, how old are you, Gigi? I'm 21. You're chilling at your parents' house. What, what's your relationship like with your parents? Um, it's pretty good. They're fun... They're fun people, actually. I like hanging out with them. 
Yeah. Well, it's my mom and my stepdad's house. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you like living at home? Um, I'm actually not living at home. I just graduated this weekend, and so I'm visiting just to kind of have graduation celebrations, you know. Uh, w- uh, with what did you graduate? What kind of degree? Uh, just graduated college. Right, but in in, in what oh. um, vocation? Ooh, um, biology. Um, biology, biology, ecology, and conservation. Wow. How much shit did you have to cut open? Did you cut open anything? <laughs> um, I am also pre-vet, so I like had to cut open more stuff in like vet's offices and school. In school, how we, like, many organisms? Like, give me a number of how many organisms you had to cut open. Um, I'm a surgery technician, so like. Oh my god! I, Wait, can I guess? Can like, I guess? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it over or under 50? I would probably say over. <laughs> wow. And I mean, I'm talking your entire like college career. Over 50. Is over 100? 100 would be cutting it close. Uh... <laughs> you know what's interesting to me is this is an interesting thing to kind of think about here because a surgeon. At one, there has to be, there has to be a time in which a surgeon, all on their own, does sur- does live surgery on a human being for the first time. I mean, you know, uh, and I'm wondering, uh, first of all, who's good? To, do they tell the person this is the first, his first time, this is their first time doing the thing? And I'm also wondering how many people or animal how many dead like cadavers or whatever do you have to do before you're like all right i think i get it (laughs) yeah i mean i genuinely have no idea like what the cutoff point is like um i've done neuters before so like they let me do cat neuters as a tech Hmm. they just like throw you into it um but i like I am terrified for vet school because, like, I don't know when they're going to be like, all right, you're ready to, like, cut open this animal and, like, go into its guts. Because, like, like how will you know when you're, like, confident to be like, okay, I know exactly what this organ is, like, not to cut into it. Right, right. That's what I want. It's like, if you cut open four cats, mm-hmm. are you like, all right, let's get, let's do a live one now? What's the number until you're ready? Yeah, and, like... I know this is, like, a bad comparison, but, like, on shows on, like, Grey's Anatomy, you know, like, they train for, like, years and years and years to do, like, certain surgeries, um, and it still just goes terribly wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you've been training for, like, 20 years, and you could still, like, majorly fuck up. Mm -hmm. Um, That's kind of terrifying. And uh, what I always found interesting about being a vet is Mm -hmm. there's this paradoxical thing with being a veterinarian where you think you would want to go into it because you love animals but Mm -hmm. also if you love animals you probably wouldn't be interested in cutting them in half yeah i mean like honestly that's like the hardest part of the job because like you're never dealing with animals when they're happy like they're always like (laughs) We're, like, actively stressing out the animals most of the time, you know? Right. Like, we have to poke and prod them. Um, and, like, it's hard to, like, reconcile that with loving animals. Because, like, obviously we're going to try to give them, like, as stress-free of an experience as we can. But, like, there's some animals that, like, at, like there's no way you can explain to them, like, I am, like, taking your blood for, like, a good reason. Like, right. they're just they gonna be going to be terrified. what's going on. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I Like, the vet industry, like, right now is, like, kind of fucked up. Like, a lot of people are getting super burnt out because of, like, COVID stuff. Um, and, like, because, like, clients aren't able to come into the building. Animals are significantly more stressed out um, because they're, like, mm, people aren't around. Because the owner can't be there. 
Yeah, and it's like really hard to communicate with the owners, kind of like what's going on with the animal when like the vet's not there in front of them to kind of like lead them to different issues. Um, so like, I mean, I maybe this is only at my practice, but I feel like we're fucking up a lot because it's like the communication lines are completely broken. <laughs> Are you excited to get into the 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 real deal? I don't know how the, the pipeline of becoming a veterinarian works or how much of the real deal you've already done, but I mean, yeah, definitely. Um it's like a little it's a little scary to like be a vet cuz you are then like liable for everything. Like I think I'm still just like I've been working for like 3 years. And I still think I'm, like, kind of fucking around a little bit. Um, but, like, once you're the vet, you know, it's like if someone in the practice fucks up, like, it's on you. Like, even if you weren't the one who did it. Um, and also vet school is terrifying. It's basically like med school. It's the same track where it's four years and residency. You know, it's interesting is that... Um... You know, I like to look at the world as like everyone has a little bit of imposter syndrome. You know, everyone's got their own, you know, failures or, or you know, whatever. And, and uh, everyone's a little bit nervous because it makes you feel a bit comfortable about your own feelings. But when it comes to doctors, I don't I don't want to look at them like that. I'm like, no, if you're you need to be 100 percent competent t mm -hmm. t all the time. Yeah, I mean, like, that's what you'd hope, right? <laughs> that's what you'd hope. But yeah. we're only human, except if we're dogs. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for, for sharing. Uh, uh, what you say your name was again? Um, Gigi. Gigi, hey, look. Uh, congrats on the graduation. Hope you thank had you. cake. And um, say hi to the dogs for me. I will. I'll tell, I'll tell them the gecko says hi. Do it. I hope they don't eat me. I, I think they would consider it. I, I feel like cats would be more likely, but they would definitely consider it. Well, then don't, don't just don't tell them where I live. Well, thank you so much, Gigi. You have a good night. All right. You good night, Lyle. <laughs> mm. I do think about like. You, if you're a surgeon, you got to operate how many, like, how many dead people before you do the live one? I'd love to talk to a real surgeon about this. How many, and is it different for each one? Is one surgeon like, all right, three dead guys, I got this, let's do the live one. Do some run through hundreds of dead bodies to get to the, before they do the real one? Call from... Allison. Allison! Howdy. How are you, Allison? Wonderful. How are you? You're wonderful. Um, yeah. <laughs> now, why are you wonderful? Well, um, I'm in a great place now. Um, after a fight, I heard the topic was fight tonight. Fight mm, night. You're in a great place after a fight. Tell me about this fight. So this fight was between this guy I was dating for two years, um, post-divorce. Both had kids were like Brady Bunch. Mm. Um, I moved to the middle of nowhere, Texas with him. It's actually really pretty out in the middle of nowhere, but it was very isolated. We were on like six acres and he is like a major alcoholic, like drinks wine from like 5 a.m. in the morning till like all day. Probably two bottles before 10 a.m. We tolerated a lot and there were a lot of fights because of the alcoholism. Mm. But mm. the last the last fight, um, I just had had it. My baby was sleeping upstairs. It was like 1.30 in the morning and um, he kept texting me to like wake up and get in the hot tub with him and drink. And I was like, no, I have a job interview like the next day. So I went out and I kicked, I got so mad. I kicked his wine into the hot tub. And, um, by the, yeah, as soon as I did that, he got physical and like 
slid me into the hot tub in my pajamas and then like wanted to choke me out and stuff. So it got domestic violence. So did, I, did you uh, call the police or he something? He took my phone. He, and so we're like in six acres, right? And my goal is to like not wake my sleeping baby with these like abusive tendencies. So I chunked my cell phone. Like he, ch he chunked my cell phone off the cliff. And I'm like struggling in the hot tub because he's trying to choke me on a fence. And then basically uh, I get, end up grabbing his cell phone, using the flashlight, find my phone, lock him out of the house. I'm like, I'm not about to like uproot my child in the middle of the night. Um, he starts banging on the windows. Anyways, I left that situation e freaking immediately. It was like, enough. I hate fighting. I'm like non-confrontational. Well, how long ago was this? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Okay, so uh, did you? You were you were living with him. Yeah, we had lived together for um, a year and a half. And where are you living now? I moved back um, to Houston, to the big, you know, to the city. Uh, I had like four interviews within like two, the past two weeks. I'm getting a job offer tomorrow. So that's why I'm wonderful. I'm like, heck yeah. Like get no fights. Everybody just be non-confrontational. And um, yeah, when confronted, just flight. Flight, it, flight works too. Well, I'm glad that worked <laughs> out for you. How's your, how's your kid doing? Be wonderful. Uh, we're posted up at my parents and um he's he's loving it he's watching blues clothes right now we just had bath time and played uh trouble remember the game when you pop the middle i remember trouble yeah so all is like, good I to step on i stepped on it once and it like, well the the fucking arch of the thing like went up into my foot and hurt a lot oh god so you're not supposed to step on it I don't think. I, don't, I feel like I shouldn't. I feel like I sh I'm not in a position to be complaining to you about pain right now. <laughs> so I'm, I won't. Um, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that you've uh, uh, been doing so much better, dude. Yes. Yes. And my recommendation for anybody in that situation is just like, fly. Hell yeah. What's the, what's the new gig? Yeah. So um, it's a real estate, like a huge real estate company. I was like back in this big building I used to work in. It's like a 60 story building. And um, I used to work on 54, 55, 59. And I'm going to be down on 47 at a completely different company, the company that owns the building. So I'm switching from oil and gas to real estate. And that is going to be awesome. Awesome. Well, keep killing it. What did you say your name was? Allison. Allison, thank you for sharing. Uh -huh. Good luck to you in the future. Okay. You thank take care, you. Dude. Okay, you too. Bye bye. Well, I'm glad to hear that she's been doing well. Go buy a house from that lady. Call from Darren. Darren? What is up, my man? Darren, what's up, man? Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm good. I have a, a fight story. You have oh, a fight so, story? Uh, yeah, I said I'm calling from, from Scotland. Oh, rock and roll. What's uh, uh, tell tell me your fight story, Darren? So when I was when I was in high school, I was like 15, and I was really good friends with this guy. And we had a falling out because one of the other guys in my friend group just spread mad lies and. So what happened was he just came up to me, he supposed to be my best friend, and says, let's have a, I want to fight you. So we organised it for after school finished. I meet him, and we done boxing together, so he thought he was going to beat me up quite easily. And I kicked this guy's ass. I, I got pulled off of the top of him, and it was the most vindicating fight ever, because it was just this, the fact that he talked so much shit about me around school, supposed to be my best friend, it just felt so liberating. Mm, you said this guy was your friend. Yeah, he was supposed to be. Supposed to be. Did you did you two make up afterwards, or did you continue no, no. to remain antagonistic towards each other? We 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 didn't be be friends again, but we've been around each other and like you no, know, the past is the past, and that. But man, man enough to forgive, but not to forget. Mm. And when what was the turning point?
When do you realize, oh, this person is just being friends with me as a front, when in reality they're just talking shit behind my back? I, I'd been told about it, kind of off other people, but it was mainly just when he came up and asked me for a fight for like, almost no reason. Wait, he came up and asked you for, like, politely? He came up and no, said, no, may he, I please have a fight? No, he did. He's like, it was more like, uh, I'm going to fucking do you in. And I was like, right, okay, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Is that a is that like a uh, a dialect thing? I've never heard it said. Can I? He asked me for a fight, like for permission to fight me. I I I, I guess it is. Cause it's just like it's just it's not like he asked me. He just kind of said we're going to fight, but really angrily, and it was like. So yeah, I would say mm. so. <clears throat> That's like how I'm in. I hope I'm saying that guy's name right. I'm in would ask for a fight, very politely. May I please? Yeah. If someone yeah. asked me for a fight, I would just say no. And then what would they say? Would they oh, be like, "All right, no worries, carry on, have a good day"? I, I think, I think, I, I, I don't know. That's, that's a good question. I think the point of it more for him was that obviously there was a crowd around, so he, he, he knew that if I was to say no, I was going to get like, you know, laughed at. Mm. You know, peer pressure and stuff. Defending your honor. Hmm. Uh, so have you been in uh, this this experience? Has it put you on edge at all? Your current friends, do, does it make you look at them and go, do these people truly like me? Or are they also just fronting? No, the, 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 the group of friends I've had, have, but also his group, we all kind of fell out with them after it. So I've been friends with the same people for a long time, really. And one of my mm -hmm. friends I've known since I was about six or seven. And so nah, I, I feel quite confident in my friend group. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Um, hmm. Who would you say won the fight between oh, me. you? Oh, me. Um, so and how do you know? Uh, this is other things. How do you know when you win a fight? Is it the other person's knocked out? Uh, well, it didn't get that far, but we did boxing together before. So he, he thought that he could base the fight off of the way I was in boxing. And obviously, sleep rules are different, bro. And um, but was one actually one of the, one of the people who we were both friends with at the time pulled me off of the top of him and said he's had enough. So that was like. Mm. Oh, so there's a difference. You have a different fighting style when you're not in the ring. You don't have to play by the rules. Aye, aye. But obviously, when you when you're in the ring, you're just, I can't like grab him and just like wail on him. I can't like try and tackle him to the ground or push him. So the first thing I did, because I'm quite small, is I got in close, close the distance, grabbed the, like, the, the neck of his top, and then just started uppercutting him. Um, we mm. broke from that, and then I pushed him, and he fell over. And as he, fe he, he fell and kind of supported himself on like a fence, and I headbutted him and like burst all his nose and stuff, and that's my friend. You, you like, used agility to your advantage. Yes. You're like a little Mac. Yeah, yeah. A horn squabble. I like it. Well, listen, would you say your name was Darren? Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Darren. You've inspired me. I kind of want to fight someone now because I'm 5'6 <laughs> and I'm weak. But I'm like, maybe I can... I, I, I guess. Well, I'm not agile either, so I guess, I guess I'm not inspired. I guess I will I'll continue to not fight people. But I, li I, liked, I liked living this through you vicariously. Yeah, yeah. There's your please. I'm, 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 I'm happy to share. Of course. Thank you so much, Darren. You have a good night. Cheers uh, from fucking yeah, the U.S., baby. See you later, buddy. Have a good night. Call from... Brian. Brian? Hey, Jack. Jack's in the house. Brian! How you doing? How are you doing? Pretty good. I'm tired of shit. You're tired. Why are you tired? Uh, long day, and I got vaccinated my second time this morning, so it's beating on me now. Mm, long day of doing what? Uh, I had vocal lessons, and I was just up since like seven, eight. Vocal lessons. Those never made sense to me. I understand lessons on how to like you know, play an instrument or something, but vocal lessons, how can you learn how to do your own voice? Oh, it's just like an instrument, kind of. It's uh, all about, like, 
using the proper muscles for breast support and using the soft palate of like your mouth properly and tongue placement, the whole nine yards. It's really complicated. Mm. Is it uh, <clears throat> if you could theoretically control, give lessons on the the voice muscle? Can you give lessons on other part of the body? Like, can I get like knee lessons how, on how to like make do good cool things with my knees? <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> now I'm actually thinking about this time. more because the the vo the voice is is the only part of the body. Every part of the body can theoretically be used as an instrument, but the voice is the only one that is given any sort of legitimacy. Mm. Like, why like why is there no, like, clapping teacher to make me better at clapping? Or, like... Like hand-boning? <laughs> yeah, or, like, hand-boning. Why... No one... See, I... But I... When you explain... You captain, when eh? someone would explain why there isn't a whole practice dedicated to... learning the intricacies of belly slapping... <laughs> or of clapping, I would. I feel like I could say the same thing about the voice. You could do it if you wanted to start that academy. I don't know how I would. <laughs> have you ever been in a fight? Yeah, I have. Um, so, uh, I work in Minneapolis. Uh, I've lived here for a while, and. There was this one time I deal with like a lot of like transient people like busting in and out of the city uh, to a different state and a lot of homeless people and stuff like that in my area. And there's this one time this punky looking kid uh, came up to me and asked me if I like had a phone or something, I, something along those lines. Or cigarettes or both or something like that. And I don't think I had my cell phone at the time, like, in service. So I took him in my car as I clocked out of work. And I drove him up to the nearest gas station. And he made a con call to, like, his parents or something to get a ticket back to his state. And so I drove him back to uh, the train station over next to my work. And when I dropped him off... I thought he was really cool, so I decided to go back to the gas station and buy a pack of cigarettes for him. And then when I was on my way back to finding him at the train station, I had walked, uh, like, on the sidewalk around the outside of the building, and there was, like, this area where there's, just, like, a ton of homeless people just, like, sitting down around here. And ha most of the people that I meet there are nice, but there was these group of people that I've never seen before. They must have been from out of town. And mm. some guy runs up to me and he's like, he like gets in my way and stops me from walking. And he says, Hey, I got bitches. Do you want bitches? And I'm just like, what? And he's mm. like, I got, I got like ladies. Do you want to buy a lady? I'm just like, no, no. And I tried to walk past him and he cuts me off again. And as he cuts me off the second time out of the corner of my eye, I see this like red and white bandana from behind me and some guy behind me wrapped a bandana around my face and pulled me to the ground and there was like three guys beating up on me and like digging in my pockets and shit and so I'd like swung at them it was like a pretty long fight it was like probably at least two maybe three minutes which is a long fucking time for a fight but yeah they what uh to the kid? Did, the, did the kid come save you with his Oh, I never saw him again. No, I uh, never even got to give him the cigarettes. I just used them myself after that. No, I didn't make did it to the door. Did they get anything from you? Did they take anything good? Did they get your wallet, your phone, your keys? Um, They didn't grab anything because I have like, my credit cards and debit cards in the same ID holder as like my work badge. So they had grabbed it from me and then they threw it on the ground. And so I just grabbed it and left. See, so they they missed out. Your voice lessons. Oh You're no! You're getting the yeah. wrong type of voice lessons. <laughs> because what you need is you got to learn like the faux shit from Skyrim. 
Oh, shit. You know what I mean? You gotta learn, like, dragon shouts. So that if, like, mm. imagine if those three dudes, they tried to fuck with you, and you went, like, oh, you went, Foster! And you, like, they blew, you blew them away, you know? That'd I mean, I guess you could have serenaded them with a ditty. What would ha like, what would have happened if you had started, like, singing to them? Oh, they probably would have gotten a kick out of it. They probably would have been amused, possibly. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely. Mean, that made me confused. I've always like if someone tried to mug me, like what would I, what what would they do if I just got, start, got naked and started singing? Would they? Yeah, that would get have been a better way to go. About would it. they want to leave? I mean, uh, you know, I don't, you have to get naked. I mean, you could get naked and do this too. But <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna learn vocal lessons, I feel like you gotta, you know, uh, uh, find as many use cases for that as possible. And I feel like you missed out on one here. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's a new endeavor for me. This 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 fight happened a few years ago, and I only started vocal lessons about uh, nine months ago or so. So, mm. I, I'll ask, ask your about teacher that if they time. know any yeah. any powerful shouts. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Uh, I think the craziest thing about a fight is uh, I think a lot of people would agree with me. Like the second you get into a fight, like I thought I was going to get fucked up, and I did kind of get fucked up. I was bleeding all over the place, but you don't feel a thing when the adrenaline kicks in. So right. you just you're just numb the entire time, and that's nuts. Mm. But that was the first and only one. Knowing what you know about the physical nature of 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 uh, the the physical demands of being a vocalist, do you feel like under the influence of that adrenaline, you would still be able to um, perform? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Mm. <laughs> All right, so may, we'll make a note of that when you go back to the vocal lessons that uh, your vocalist teacher needs to do something, maybe point a gun at you, something that will, like, give you <laughs> adrenaline so that Brilliant. you're prepared for when the actual thing happens. Let me know how this yeah, goes. Yeah, we can arrange something, sure. Yeah, yeah. What'd you say her name was? Ryan. Ryan, thank you so much for sharing your story, and I wish you the best of luck uh, in all your future endeavors. Yeah, thanks, Gek. Enjoy your travels. Thank you, man. You too. Bye-bye. Call from... Amin. Amin? Oh, hello? What's up, Amin? Oh, hi. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm great. Um, I am so happy to be here. Don't get too happy. This might not go well. <laughs> so your topic is that I've got That's, to I, fight, you, right? I, you you laughed nervously there. I'm just well. I only say that because, um, you know, I like to lower expectations because if you think this, if you start off assuming that this won't go well, then it, when it if it does go well, which I am in, you know, ultimately I think it will go well, depending on what how you define something going well you know you could you only have the uh, uh possibility of your expectations being shattered positively as opposed to uh being let down oh, i respect that i mean we need to kind of figure out what kind of expectations we must rely on like i'm not i i had i struggled with that personally but i kind of moved on from from like just putting down expectations like, oh, should I talk to this girl? Like, I mean, mm. I mean, I worked on that, but now I feel like we, uh, we build, we build expectations on each other. So, I mean, um, I'm not, I'm not here to let anyone down. I think either way, as you said, it's, it's going to go well. So, <laughs> well, I, uh, you said I'm in, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you sounded like you were ready to tell me something about a fight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Before I interrupted you with nonsense. No, I think I think it's I think it's just a good way to introduce each other either way. But um, well, this is interesting because yeah. I I mean you don't seem like you would ever hurt a fly. You seem like a a sweet guy. I want to hear who I want to hear about the person that you know is is vile enough to get you going. <laughs> I mean. It's a lo it's it's like a long time ago. I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people might have some similar experience, like high school fights and et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. Just just so you know, um, I'm I'm actually calling you from Egypt. So, <laughs> oh shit! 
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to move back to Ohio very soon. So I'm excited to have better internet. Um, so <laughs> to the story, um, I, I went to high school in the Middle East. Um, and they're like, I, I don't know, I was, I was born in the United States, but I came back, um, I came back like just to go to high, to, to college, right? But in high school, there was kind of tough. Like a lot of people there uh, don't like you because you're American. Like they just bully you and they just push you around. So uh, I had a lot of, I had a lot of, I had a lot of fights, but there's like one particular fight I had like that got physical that like is a sore wound to my, <laughs> to my self-esteem. Not anymore, but it, I kind of, I have to like remember and mention it once in a while. Um, so it started out like, you know, a regular day in school, like, um, and there's this guy um, or a short, like, literally half the size i'm like five for example imagine me like five five like four or five six right this guy's like half the size of me right and um he talks uh so much uh shit like he talks he he, he makes fun of me a lot and he uh used to call me like gay and stuff like you know this like you know high high school shit and it's funny enough sure. he still does it now you know he, yeah so i um he still does it now I, do you, I, you still know this guy i mean i I mean, not really. He just, he, he's always online on, on like social media and he's, he still like he's, talks he's shit. Still like in your, uh, uh, Facebook messenger giving you I mean, shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I try, I don't so, like blocking people. I just like prefer to just, <laughs> I just prefer to just like, um, <laughs> just ignore them. <laughs> you don't like blocking people. I mean, what I want to hear what, I want to hear what happened with this guy. I want to hear yeah. the, I want to hear the fight you got into. So I, uh, I don't know. I just got fed up with this shit. So, um, I just stood up to him and kind of stood up for myself, you know, and was like, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just, I was just, in a in a like manic rage. I was like, just really mad. And he was just laughing. All of his friends were like corralling me in like a fucking pit. And, sure. uh, <laughs> it turned into like a one V one between him and this short guy. I fucking lost man i felt like genuinely i genuinely felt bad that i didn't want to like fight him like what happened was is that i don't really remember how the context was but he talked a lot and when the fight started he just pushed shoved me and i let all the weight drop and i just fell down and i was like i'm just gonna take all these hits and he just wailed on me for like like a few minutes and everybody was just screaming and laughing but uh i didn't really like defend myself i just felt like he was too short and I didn't want to like fuck him up or get in bigger trouble. <laughs> so you I, know, I understand that. I actually genu I genuinely believe it takes, uh, you know, and I'm not just saying this to be fucking corny or whatever, but I genuinely do believe it takes more strength to not fight than to fight. You know what I mean? Cause I, I'm a little bit like that too. Like, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I don't like to get whatever physical pe and I, I'm fucking weak as shit. So it doesn't matter <laughs> even if I did. But, um, you know, again, I think it takes more guts to, you know, act in a way that is according to how you feel than as opposed to, uh, uh, you know, giving in to that intense pressure to want to hit back and defend your honor to everyone else as opposed to defending uh, uh, your own honor and your own version of the uh, view of yourself. Uh, by acting in accordance with, you know, uh, what you think is right. So I actually think it takes a, a lot more courage to not fight. I mean, thanks, man. I just, I kind of, I kind of feel, um, I kind of feel like I, I, I didn't fight for, I, like, I kind of, I kind of lost the fight because I, I, I didn't, I, I, like, I, fought, I, I already fought for myself already. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, um, I kind of, I kind of feel like it was, like a bitter defeat and just taking the fact that he was like literally shorter than me and like half the size of me. So it was like a talk for everybody. Everybody was like meant talking about well, for like a few weeks. Like it was, well, listen, it, you know, if, if this is still bothering you, no, and you want to, and you've, you've changed your mind about uh, everything. What you can do is you make a Facebook event 
Um, I mean, Iman. I mean, like Amen. Yeah. Amin kicks your ass, and you invite him to it, and then you show up, and you fight again. One day, one day, that's 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 a true battle. But uh, if, I want to, I want to, I want to, like, Egypt. <sighs> it'll be a I'll pleasure. Re- I'll referee. I mean, I, I like to see, you know, that as a positive thing. Like, maybe we could, like, work together and, like, develop charity, like, for smaller people i guess um i don't i'm not like trying to you're so I don't sweet think... dude you're like you're like this guy is like wailing on you and you're like i want to start a charity for people like you that's like <laughs> the not that's the most pat you're the most pacifistic is that a word pacifistic person dude, you could I think say you i've ever want. met and uh you know look pow- power power to you yeah uh, if everyone was like you there'd be no war so you know, so. keep 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 living the way you believe in, man. Oh, thank you so much. And yeah, dude, have have a wonderful day. And I I, I see great things in the future for you too, man. I can't wait for your journey. Have a good we'll one. We'll see. We'll see. Thank you, man. You have a good night. You too. Call from Sierra. Sierra. Hi. What's up, dog? Whoa. Hi. I know it's crazy. It is crazy. I'm on the computer. You're on the phone and the computer. I'm. I well, guess I'm also on the phone. You're on the TV. No, you're not. I turned it off. I'm on the magazines. I'm on the TV. No matter where you are, you might see me I'm on the radio. <laughs> something, something. Who, who is that? That's Kid Cudi. Is it? I don't know. Yeah, you listen to Kid Cudi. Uh, I mean, I guess I know. Some of this stuff. I'm not that cool. You're not. What makes you say that you're not that cool? Um, I don't know. I have a 17 year old brother. I think he thinks I'm not cool. So I'm 31. Oh. I don't. I don't feel like I know shit about what kids like anymore. I'm in the millennial generation. See, this is the um, I think a fault with the, the generally accepted um idea of coolness is why would we let seven a 17 year old kid is like the least cool person ever all they've done is go to school uh yeah they, they, I mean, they don't do it then they watch they do homework they go on tiktok i mean your your 17 year old brother's probably not that cool just because like he listens to some fucking music you know okay. I mean, you have 10 years of like you know you got some life on him you know what i'm saying like yeah i have seen some shit i guess and what, I have what been, shit have you seen? I mean, I've been in a fight with uh, more than one person at a time. Both of them against you? Yes. Who? who, who tell me about this fight. <clears throat> um, well, it was at a bar, you can imagine. Mm. Um, I was with my boyfriend at the time. And we both had to go to the bathroom. And... We knocked on the bathroom door and one of them was occupied. And after I knocked on the door, these two girls poked their heads out and yelled at me basically for knocking on the door. Um, And then they shut the door in my face. And then I was like, of course, like that was unnecessary. So my reaction was, you know, okay cool and they heard me say that through the door and they popped back out and started um you know how girls do they put their fingers in your face and like get up in your business but they won't ever hit you so they were they were getting up in your business because they slammed the door on you in the bathroom well i they heard me say something snarky after they shut the door Mm. um but then my boyfriend comes out of the other bathroom and he's trying to separate us. He sure. somehow gets me like into the corner and corrals me into the bathroom that he just came out of and pushes me in there. And while he's doing that, that girl, one of the girls rears back and swings at me. So she hit my boyfriend. So I, you know, turned around and, went to town on her um 
And I'm not a hair grabber. I think that's cheap. But sure, when you have, sure. what, 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 what was your move? I'm five foot tall, and these girls had easily six inches on me a piece. Sure. So, in order to keep from getting my ass completely, you know, obliterated, I had to control both of them until somebody could get in and help me. So, I did have both of their hair in one in each hand. Um, you ha- oh I thought you I thought what I thought when you were gonna say is you had oh you had one in each hand because I thought you were like had somehow corralled both of their hair into one hand because hair is very <laughs> thin you could grab both of their hairs with one hand. you could probably grab three girls' hair with just one hand probably but you can't control you probably can't See, control that well with I'm one st- hand. I'm still interested as to why you think you're not as cool as your 17 year old brother. <laughs> You don't even care about me <laughs> and the and the two girls. Um, no, uh, I get well, it. I, well, it's part. It, 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 no, no, no. It, it 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 works into it because I'm I'm confused. Like, I look at a 17 year old kid. That's like the least interesting thing ever. Why um, why would, why are you looking at the why? Uh, I mean, you know, you you again. You have exp- you fought people. You've grabbed hair. You've uh, b- interacted with more people. Why? Why are you, does your brother set the standard here? Um, I don't know. I don't think that it's just him, though. This whole like, uh, I mean, how old are you? Uh, you know, I'm an age. Okay, are you are you a Gen Gen Z or are you millennial? I'm a gecko. Okay, well then, never mind. Um, the Gen Z people have come out and given us millennials a lot of shit in the last year and have mm, definitely checked, checked me and made me feel my age. Um, about like the clothes that we wear and how we brush our hair. It's so stupid. So but, stupid. But it checked me and made me realize that I'm not, I'm not in my twenties anymore. I actually am pretty boring. I live alone. And, uh, I go to school and that's pretty much it. First of all, living alone is sick. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, you, you just described a 17 year old kid. They, well, they don't live alone. They probably live with their parents and they go to school. Yeah. You have your own place. You can eat ice cream whenever you want. I mean, you got a good life compared to a 17 year old kid. I appreciate that, Gek. You made me feel cooler than I've ever felt. Yeah, you know, I'm glad to hear that. Because <laughs> the the I, I I still I don't think that youth and coolness are directly proportionate. I think you're right. Um. Well, I hope you continue to feel cool. Uh, what did you say your name was? Sierra. Sierra. Sierra, don't let your 17 year old brother make you not feel cool. I, I, yeah, I haven't heard one thing about him that makes me... I mean, I'm sure he's a nice kid. Maybe he'll be cool later. But for now, I'm not sold. He's what? He needs his ass kicked a couple times. You know what you should do? You should go kick his ass. I'm going to. Good. Let me know how that goes. I will. Give one one give one kick for me. Okay, like, I will. In your head, be like, this one is for Gek. You got it. Awesome. You have a good night, Sierra. Thank you for sharing. You too. Love ya. <laughs> Call from Danny. Danny! Oh my gosh. Hi. Oh my god. Shoes. <laughs> Shoes. Oh my god. Shoes. What? That song? That's my that favorite song? Um, video from back in the day. Oh my god. Shoes. Really? Is. Shoes. Oh my god. Am I actually on stream? That's so weird. It's Are- like. Delayed. Really? What's what's weird? What do you think? Why? What's weird about it? Well, like you're on my TV and it's delayed a little bit, so I didn't realize that you picked up and I was confused. Oh yeah, yeah. you got to mute the TV. Yeah, I did that. Isn't it funny that like you know what this cool about like a stream? It's a small thing. Is like if you were watching the Jimmy Fallon, right? Like he'd be on your TV. Like I, I was on your TV, and now I'm like talking directly to you in your ear. Like, you know, if you were watching Jimmy so Fallon, weird. like, he's not going to fucking, you know, pick up if you call. No, he's not. So, I mean, you're doing a service, really. 
service to all of humanity. So thank you. I want to say that. No, thank you right. so much. You're right. What did you say her name was? Danny. Danny. What do you, what do you what do you do? What are you doing, Danny? What am I right doing? Now? Yeah, what are you doing? I'm sitting on my couch okay. with my cat. My cat is okay. napping next to me. I was also eating some really amazing chocolates that my friend got me for my birthday. Really uh, good. When was your birthday? Um, well, it hasn't happened yet. It's in a couple well, when days. When is it? Um, June 6th. June 6th. That's uh, Chloe's yeah. birthday. Wait, who's Chloe? That's my sister. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, you don't have to be sorry. I I don't think you should be sorry because I don't, I don't know why, you know, I don't think you, you, you should... It, like, we're not that close, you and I. Oh, I thought we were. I mean, I think objectively we're not that that we're not that close. I, I I feel like um we're not close enough where like you should reasonably know what my sister's name is even. Okay. Are you fa- are you fa- offended by that? I feel like I've offended you. Um. Wait. What? Danny, could you do me a favor? Are you sitting on the couch right now? I am. Could you stand up? I, I will, sure. Are you okay, facing I'm the standing. TV? Are you looking at the TV right now? Um, yes. Turn around. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Okay. <laughs> what, are you look, what, are you look, what are you looking at now? Um, the the wall. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a blank wall? Um, I have this, like, metal thing with mirrors on it that I got from... Bed Bath and Beyond years ago. Metal thing with mirrors on it. What does that mean? Um, it's like a it's supposed to be art. It costs like twenty dollars. Um it's not that pretty, but I needed something to take up space. Hmm. Is there any so that's the only that's the only thing? That is oh, the oh, only okay, thing. I know what you're saying. I, I, I can picture yeah. it in my mind. It's about it's a metal thing, a bunch of circles. It's got a bunch of metal it. circles on it, yeah. I feel like I've seen something like that before. Mm-hmm. Is that is that's the only thing that you're looking at right now? Uh that is the only thing. Can you see yourself in the reflection of it? Um Well now I can. I got a little bit closer to the mirror. So they're really small do, mirrors. Do you do you have a good self image? Do you like yourself? I do, actually. It's taken really some time, but I've gotten right. there. Thank you. What do you think what do you think was the um most important thing in the uh, process of getting there? Um Realizing that um, I'm independent and that I don't have to follow what other people want me to do, I guess. Mm. You know, was there a, was there a period of your life in which you were primarily just following what other people wanted you to? Oh yeah, or at least not e- not really even following what they wanted to do, just. Um, feeling really insecure and feeling like um, if somebody like disapproved of how I was or whatever, that I, I should feel bad about myself. Mm. That was mostly when I was a kid, I guess. What's, um, what's something that you would do that other people would appro- would disapprove of? Well, I had, I feel like I, uh, my family was like, I was very different from my family and I've realized as I've gotten older that I'm not really as weird as they made me feel but like i would have i don't know like i liked certain kinds of music that my family thought was really weird like death cab for cutie which that's very basic so why did they think that was so weird i don't know (laughs) but they (laughs) tell me like ellie your music is so your music taste is so weird oh i just i just oops i just revealed my real name forget that danny you know what's funny (laughs) is that your real well okay Uh, well (laughs) No, I mean, your fake name makes sense because Danny and Ellie are, when combined, Danielle. Oh, my God. Wow. Did you not notice that? No, I didn't. I, I, thought, I, wow. thought that, I still thought that your name was Danny, but that your parents called you Ellie, like, for Danielle. For oh, Danielle. Although, Ellie would be a very weird shortening of the name Danielle. It would. Yeah, that's that's not a normal shortening for that name. Hmm. No. What's your nickname? Gek. 
Okay. You don't have another one? Like, a, what do you mean? Like, a, something people call me? Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you, what do you want to call me? You want to give me a nickname? Hmm. Well, you know, um, Lyle, I gotta say, um, ever since I watched George of the Jungle back in the day, years ago, um, I've always hated Lyle's. Like, I've always just thought Lyle, ha like, every Lyle in my life has to be a villain, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's not a good name. Um... I, uh... Uh, Lyle's not a very common name. It isn't. It isn't. Um, I did actually once, uh, well, there was one summer I met two Lyles in the same summer. And they're both kind of annoying. They weren't even that bad, so I can't really oh, say really? they were villains. Why, why were they annoying? Um, well, they were children. And I was okay. a camp counselor. And one of them had a huge crush on me. And just kept following me around and causing trouble trying to get my attention. We had to put him in timeout a lot. And then there was this other kid who would just, the other Lyle would just um, just sit and not talk to anybody for, you know, the whole eight hours of camp. He would just sit there. Mm. And I'd be he's like, probably, hey, Lyle, probably, you want to... He also probably had a crush on you. He was probably brooding to make you think maybe, he was, like, cool and dirty. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But whatever. Well... Uh, you know, I, I don't know if you hate me is in an attempt to, like, further the narrative, um, just for the sake of balance in your own life, which I would totally understand. Um, I don't know that many Dannys. No? You know, I think I, I probably know two throughout the years. I don't know them anymore. They might be my Facebook friends. How much would you sell me that mirror thing for? Um, gosh, I mean, if I, if I had, if, you know, if, if I did a yard sale and I put it on my yard and, and you came by and said, Hey, how much for that? I'd probably say $5. Really? You'd give it to me for $5? Yeah. It's been here right. for, for years. All right. So. I'll take it. Okay. We got All deal. right. Deal done. Well, it was, it's been a pleasure doing business with you, Danny. Yeah, you too. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the night. Yeah, you too. I appreciate you. Good night. I appreciate you too. Good night. Gek has be Gek Chat has become Gek Book Marketplace. Call from Gummy Worm. Hey. Hey. You ever been in a fight? I sure have. Um, yeah, no. Uh, recently, I went to a bar. Uh, let me backtrack a little bit. I, I matched with a girl on Facebook dating. And then she works at a bar. Dude, you match with the girl. Sorry. Hold on, actually, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, um, let me turn you down a little bit. Sure. Um, you match with a girl on Facebook dating? Yeah, it's like Tinder, but hosted by Facebook. I know what it is. It's, I've never, I, uh, I haven't used fa I used Facebook dating a long time ago. I don't even know. Does it still exist? Oh, no. It still exists. Damn, I got to check my Facebook dating account. Yeah, you might have some hot things in your area. Some hot geckos in your area. That could be cool. Um, okay, you matched with a woman on Facebook. Hold on. Is, is our caller too loud here? No, it's not. It's not your problem. It's the... It's the uh, uh, I got you on uh, speaker too. Technical. I could even take you off technical. speaker. Maybe that'll help. Uh, I think it's the technical asp. It's my fault. All right. Anyway, um, all right. You matched with a lady on Facebook dating who works at a bar. Continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I decided. You know what? When I, I'm, why don't I go visit her? I'm, I'm snapping her on, on the Snapchat. Sure. And. Uh, so I go over, um, I sit down at the bar, It's uh, it's got this kind of like towny feel to it, and there's, you know, a handful of other people there, um, and at one point some, uh, somebody says, oh hey, you know, you stuck out to me because everybody here's a regular and you're not, so it's that kind of bar. And I was like, okay, okay. So uh, one of the first things that happened is that a couple people came in and wanted to chug pitchers. 
but the taps weren't working. So they had an argument with the bartender, the one bartender, that girl. Uh, uh, and it got like really intense between them about how many tall boys they should order. So that was almost a fight. Uh, and then there, and then I started fucking with the fan at one point, and somebody was like, "Hey, quit it." I was like, um, "Do you work here?" And she was like, "Yeah, I do actually." And then her boyfriend got all up in Why my face. Why were you face. fucking with the fan? What do you like? You were like, I was like fidgeting with it. Like I was like, like, uh, like spinning it. It was off, but I was spinning the it. Ceiling fan. You were fidgeting with Correct. the ceiling fan. Yeah. How did I would? Why, why? Why are you fidgeting with this? That's not that. That's not really a fidget position. That's you have to be like standing on a chair or something. Well, they were like I guess low ceilings and high bar chairs because I'm not. I'm really not a tall dude. I'm like okay. five five. All right. So someone told you to stop messing with the ceiling fan, and that's yeah. You she off. was like, "That's a three thousand dollar fan. Do you want to pay for that?" And I was like, um, do you work here? And she was like, yeah, I do. And then her boyfriend started getting up on my face. And I was like, all right, dude. He walked away and I started fucking with the fan again. And then he almost darted at me. But then the bartender lit girl started like bitching him out. And all his friends calmed him down. And they actually left. Then I was about to leave, say, 10, 15 minutes later. Sure. <clears throat> And then I'm this on their guy side so who far. I don't know why you were fucking with that fan. Ah, uh, you know, but uh, this other guy who wasn't even involved, who must who was like way older, like like mm -hmm. late 30s, maybe 40s, um, was like, "Hey, you little shit, you want to fight?" And Hell I had man. already gone outside when his friends for the other guy were holding them back and said, "Hey, if you wanna, if you wanna, you know, if you wanna deal with this outside." We can go outside. So I went outside for a little while and he didn't come out. Uh, so I was already prepped to fight. So I was like, all right, fuck it. Let's fight. Dude, you know what you are and in this situation? You're like SpongeBob in the SpongeBob SquarePants movie going into the bar. That's a good bar, analogy. Going into the bar with all the like tough sailor people. Yeah. And that's a really good analogy. When he like blows bubbles, but your version of blowing bubbles is you're fucking with the ceiling fan. Yeah. That's kind of how yeah. I'm picturing this situation. It's not inaccurate. Mm -hmm. So did they, did they um, you up? No, no, no. So this, this one dude, um, I, I went to throw a punch and he started grappling immediately. Like he grabbed me and we went to the ground on the concrete and he kept asking me if I wanted to give up. And I kept saying, no, you're just like holding me. Like you're not even choking me. And I got out mm. of there, out of his grasp eventually after some people started coming out and saying, hey, we're going to call the police. And I was like, okay, um, all right, <laughs> while he was fighting me. And then after I got out of his like grip, I kicked him in the face and he didn't get up. So I got my longboard and I boarded off into the sunset. Damn. Looked back, he still wasn't up. Why were you fucking with the ceiling fan? Just listen. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, good question. I can't answer that. I don't know. You know, one it day felt I feel like, like before, the mood. I feel like, you know, um, one day but you're not going to notice in that guy. He's going to roundhouse kick you in the face out of nowhere. That would be the karma, wouldn't it? Yeah, I hope I hope it happens. Not because I don't like you, but because I I like I like balance, just in the universe. No, I do like balance. I'm a Dallas, so I be I believe in that. So I think that's fair. You're a Taoist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the Tao Te Ching. You ever read that book or no, heard of that, it? That's like the way, right? That's like with the with the yes, waves. Yes, exactly. Earth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Balance, right. that's, like, that, like that, yin that yang. Your explanation when they were like, "Why are you fucking with the ceiling fan?" It's the way. I'm a Taoist. It's the way. There's a part. There's a part about fucking with ceiling fans in the book. Yes. Well, listen, Gummy Worm. It was a pleasure talking to you.
It was a pleasure um, eating you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime, anytime. I uh, I hope to remain part of the stream for many streams to come, as you know, Happy a bite at a time. Here. Happy to have you here. Well, maybe one day you can come over and you can uh, fuck with my ceiling fan. That sounds like a euphemism, but it's not. Yeah. Do you have a ceiling fan in your abode? I have no possessions. Uh, I'm merely a lizard traveling through time and space. And I thank you so much for calling into my stream. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. Of course, man. Good night. Night. Call from... David. David. Yo, what's good, Gecko? David, um... Hello. Have you ever been in a fight? I have. I was in a fight recently, about Tell four about or five it. weeks ago at my college. Tell me about it. Okay, so the short version of this is I was in the game room at my college with some of my friends. And one of my, one of my friends, no longer my friend, is he's he can be a bit of a, a volatile person. He has his own issues, which I won't get into because of his own privacy. But he was being just very aggressive, and he was being a dickhead. And I said, hey, you need to knock it off. And he threw his drink in my face. And so I said to him, you're a fucking child. You have no self-control. And his, he decided to respond to that by fucking assaulting me. He tried to throw hands. He, didn't, he doesn't know how to throw hands. He, he cannot fight. I threw one punch, and that was pretty much it. He went down, got up after a second. And then some people stepped in between us. Mm. Uh, David, are you conflict avoidant? I tend, to, I think I tend to avoid conflict a bit more. I don't, I would prefer not to get into a fight. I would really only resort to, resort to physical violence if I was uh, trying to defend myself or uh, another person. And how often do you find yourself in situations in which um, you need to defend yourself? Not often. The only other uh, only other situation where I've ever had to uh, defend myself was uh, a couple of years ago, and even then, it wasn't a very like threatening situation. Do you feel well prepared to defend yourself physically? I think so. I th I think I can hold my own in a fight. And it's I think I can throw with a, a decent bit of weight. It's good to know that um, you are able to defend yourself. I, I personally, if anyone, I mean, there right. are like, I mean, kind of literally, like, I, I bet there are, there are definitely like 14 year olds that could beat the shit out of me if they wanted to. Um, oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm kind of a uh, small guy. I am, I'm more than susceptible to a 14 year old. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think if, of the youngest a big guy. I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to think of the youngest age of child that I could confidently say there exists no child of that age in the entire world that I could not beat in a fight. Does that make sense? Yeah, I feel like that would at the most, at the very most, be like. I feel like the very youngest that could be a threat to you would probably be like 15, 16, if they were some, maybe if they were some kind of like. Oh, that's player. not true. That's not true. I think uh, there's probably. I mean, how confident? Like, there's probably a thirteen-year-old out there that could beat the shit out of me. I mean, yeah, pro I guess somewhere, some some kid who like works out all the time. I'll say with confidence. Some kid who's getting back at the bullies. I'll say with confidence. I'll just spit out a little piece of rice cake. That's okay. I'll say with confidence. Uh, there, there exists no six-year-old. I'll do six. six. I'll do. There's no six-year-old in the world of all seven billion people in any country anywhere that right. I could not beat up in a fight. Uh, one one six year old no, but then the question from there is, how many can you fend off before you start to get overwhelmed? Is it like ten? Is it twenty? 
What's the max amount standard of standard six year old? I could fight off. Uh, are they all attacking at once? They're all attacking at once. You're getting, you know, you're getting swarmed by six year olds. Like I could feet. fight off probably ten of them. That'd be kind of fun. You ever seen um? What was it? What's that movie? Step Brothers was it? Where they beat up all the kids? I don't think I've seen that movie. Well, listen, David, it was a pleasure um, talking through these hypotheticals with you. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. You have a wonderful rest of the night. This, is, this has been a dream of mine for a long time. Uh, have we never spoken before, David? We have not spoken before. I started watching you back in January. Oh, shit. Well, how are you doing? Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh... I don't know, not a whole lot. Uh, life's going pretty... Uh, life's uh, it's going all right right now. I'm just kind of waiting for stuff to get uh, get moving again. Fin uh, finish my semester. Finish the previous semester, and now I'm just trying to get work. Not a whole lot going on. Work in what? Uh, I'm trying to get a job back at uh, a restaurant I was working at last summer. J uh, just as a busboy at that place. That was a very nice job. Uh, the boss is really yeah. nice, and I got some decent pay. Well, I hope it. I hope it uh, turn, works out for you. I hope you get paid Thank a, you. a trillion dollars. And Thank um, you I so hope that Jeff Bezos cut, cut, dines at your restaurant and goes, "Hey, that bus boy, give him a hundred thousand dollars." If he doesn't say that, I, I uh, maybe maybe I can uh, maybe I can sneak up on him. You could. You could, you could steal from him, but that would be illegal, and I don't Pickpocket. condone anything that's illegal. He is so rich that I feel like it should not matter. Well, listen, he's not going to miss the night, David. Thank you so much for have uh, a good rest of the me. night. Thank you so much for having me, David. Forever, good luck. Baby. I'll see you at eight. Call from Lucifer. 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 Hi, what's up? What are you doing, man? Nothing much. I've been trying to call you for like months. I'm in awe. Oh hell yeah! Well, listen, um, Lucifer. Uh, now that we've finally can talk here, is is there something in these months and months of you calling me that you wanted to talk about? Um, nothing specific. Just more so like the prompted questions because I had a story. I had two stories. Uh, if you want to pick from either one, one's personal and one was from my manager when I worked at Spencer's a few years back. So whatever it takes. So, one, so more. one of them is not your story. No, but it's it's real interesting. Let me just tell you. Um, I feel like I feel like I I, I feel like I'm only um, you know I feel bad having someone else's story told on here without their permission. You know. That's true. I, feel like I don't know if that's, that's our story to tell here. Ah, there's a shark. I feel like, I feel like you're right about that one. I'd have to ask him about it, and if they ever. Well, listen. What's your story? Who did you get into a fight with? Um. So a few months back, I was in the funny farm. I was in uh, the funny partial, farm. the partial partial hospitalization. Uh, oh, the funny farm. Yeah. Yeah, the funny farm. And uh, they, like, I knew I had issues, which is, I self-admitted uh, for my own, you know, safety. It was the right thing to do. Sure. And um, I, I constantly was in arguments with the doctors because they wanted to put me on meds that uh, I wasn't, I didn't want to take. And they would get really aggressive about it. Uh, like... And it, it wasn't like, um, I'm trying to think of like the best way to explain it. Um, they were meds that were going to give me more issues than solve issues. And I was constantly uh, explaining to them that they were going to mess with me. Like, for example, I had an eating disorder, like a real bad one at the time. And these antidepressants were most common top side effect was just uh, worsen your 
uh, eating habits. And I was like, I'm not taking these. And it would be constant just aggression back and forth. It wasn't okay. physical, obviously, but you know. So, so who did you fight? Uh, I fought with the doctor a lot. It was a lot of back and forth because they really wanted to put me on these meds that I just didn't want to take. And I was like, could I get something else? And he was like, well, we filled the, these ones for you. You're not taking them. Uh, so why would we want to put you on other ones? And I was like, I can't really argue with that point, but I, you know, I already told you I didn't want to go on these meds in the first place. Okay. So there was no impasse and there was, uh, no way for me to really, you know, get better during that stay there. Um, which... You know, it's a very different story, I feel like, from most of these, which were physical fights, but this was definitely more of a verbal fight. Because uh, I, for me, I personally consider verbal fights still to be fights. Well, uh, look, I'm glad you made the decision that you felt was right for you. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Uh, well, I, I don't know anything about funniest medication, funniest so I don't know what to, what to tell you necessarily. Oh, well, you know... I, I actually have an evaluation coming up pretty soon, um, so maybe they'll be able to put me on the right stuff. Well, good. Glad to hear that. Um, how's your night going now? How is my night going? It's going good. Um, Aww. What's going on? Why all? Oh, I said it. I said it's going good. Oh, I thought you said it's not going good. I got real scared. You know, I haven't been to a doctor in a while, but if I told them what I was eating, they'd probably tell me I had about three weeks left to live. So I'm trying to live it up uh, until then. Yeah, eat that worm. Well, thank you so much for calling in and sharing. Yeah, of course. Have a good night. You too, man. It's not.